So we could just start on, on Alice Park and um, obviously you're one of a, a few in this team who, who have played there before. Can you give us an idea of, of what it's like and, and just how kind of electric that atmosphere is in there? Yeah, I think electric is the word that sums it up. It's an amazing place to play. Uh, both teams have played amazing rugby there before. Been lucky enough to play in some really hard, tough games there. I think back to 2.13 straight away and it had everything. It had, you know, so they scored a couple of tries early um, and we managed to come back in the end. But it's a cool place. It's got massive amount of history. Uh, you don't have to go too far back to 95. So as All Blacks, uh, we understand what it means uh, for South Africa to play at Alice Park. Um, but at the same time, it's one of the places that you love to play as a player. And it's awesome because the, the drive-in is, is loud. Um, both team supporters are banging on the bus and saying a few things. So it, it does have that, that feel about it. And um, this week definitely has that feel too. Would it be ex extra significant in a way, given the recent form, if you were able to turn it around at a fortress like Alice Park? Yeah, we get to play some amazing places and Alice Park is that. Um, so you always want to go out there and, and put your best foot forward and ideally we always want to come away with a win. Um, but the best thing we've we actually been doing this week is worrying about ourselves, worrying about what we can control. If we go to the process, uh, hopefully we get that result in the end. But if you worry about the result, you probably forget about the little things that you've got to do from the first minute um, and you've got to carry on that momentum throughout the whole game. Any particular reason why you didn't go to Ellis Park today for the captains? You guys come, you guys comfortable that, that you know the place well enough? Uh, more the fact that just if we went, we probably would have got caught in a bit of traffic on the way back. So um, we've had an awesome time here. The school's been amazing. Um, they've been very accommodating for us. So we just thought we could get what we needed here. Um, and as you said, most of the boys have, have been there at different stages, whether that was through Super Rugby or, or Test matches. Yeah, there's always pressure. There's there's always a little bit of outside no, outside noise. Um, but the main thing uh, for myself as a leader, as a senior player in this team, is uh, I've got to sort myself out first. I've got to train well, which will set me up to hopefully go out and play well. Um, besides that, it's actually passing on some of the knowledge, the knowledge of being at altitude. I know we were halfway, three quarters way up the the mountain uh, last week, but this week it's a little bit higher. So just a couple of little tricks of the trade. Make sure you're really hydrated uh, before you get out there. Uh, you're going to have a dry mouth. Um, it's going to be hard to communicate because of that. So making sure that we're communicating with different eyes. So passing on some of those things. Um, but it's actually just trusting the boys and uh, not overloading them with information, making sure they've got enough, but they uh, still go out there and trust themselves and, and play nice and clear. What's the keys against a forward pack like the box, Sam? You know, with the amount of sort of experience they have there? Yeah, it's the same as, as last week. And, and everyone knows they've got a good scrum. They've got a good good maul. Uh, the big strong guys, they love to create momentum and uh, get downhill. So for us, we've got to go out there and stop that. Um, sometimes it's easier speaking about that than actually doing it. Um, but we've got to make sure we don't give them an opportunity to do that. And um, I think one of the biggest things with that is that our discipline. We can't give away silly penalties. So they're getting opportunities to kick into corners to set up uh, their rolling maul. So what have you done or, or focused on this week that's different to last week and, and previous weeks? Yeah, obviously we, we played them last week, so there's a couple of things we've identified um, that we can be better at. Um, opportunities that we've, we've seen, and, and that's something that happens every week. So um, I'm not going to tell you exactly what they are, so hopefully we've done enough homework and uh, we've worked on that, that skill level so we can go out there and exploit those weaknesses that we've seen. But that's the cool thing about Test Match Rugby. It's, uh, you know, every week you're looking to improve and fix some of those mistakes that you might have had or some of the opportunities that the opposition might have seen. How much emphasis has been, been placed on a good start and, and that, the intent, that the concentration levels in particular are quite high in the, in the opening couple of minutes to, to avoid a situation like you've been through in the last couple of Test Match going behind and playing catch-up? Yeah, playing catch-up is, is harder to do, but um, you can do it as a, a Test side, but it's way easier to start well. So. Um, going out there and executing straight away, completing what we're trying to do is, uh, is something that we've talked about this week because, as you said, uh, South Africa are a good side and they, they do squeeze you if they do get in front. They're, they're good front runners, so ideally we don't give them that uh, 10 to you know, 7 points head start from the, from the first whistle. Especially to silence the crowd a bit because the crowd will be up for it as well. 
yeah, last week the crowd was awesome. Um, obviously a lot of support for South Africa, but there were a few Kiwis in the stand, so it was really cool to connect with them afterwards and, and hearing their, their support throughout the game as well. Sam, is there anything behind your jersey swap with Scott Barrett? Uh, not that I'm aware of. I think it's just how they've named it. So I'm uh, I'm pretty happy to get a jersey. I'm not too worried about what number as long as it's not uh, you know too high. Um, <laughs> don't think I could pass the ball as a nine or run the cutter as a ten. So pretty happy it's in the tight forward, tight forwards. Sam, how's how's Fletcher and the nerves, the excitement, and everything that comes with the debut? Yeah, Fletch has been awesome. Um, obviously, know him pretty well from Crusaders and played with him a couple of times at Canterbury. He's um, He's no fuss and he's been great uh, the last couple of weeks. He's just got stuck into his work. He's um, asked the right questions at the right time, but at the same time, he hasn't expected all the answers to come his way. He's gone and, gone and found them. And, you know, I'm looking forward to him getting out there. I'm sure he'll get out there at some stage and um, it'll probably be the first of many. Like, I've been very impressed with uh, how he's performed last week and, and also this week. Sam, you've never been through a run like this in your Blacks career. How, how different is it to deal with, and particularly you know the mental elements of just being in a bit of a funk and having a flick out of it? Yeah, yeah you, are, you are right. I haven't uh, had this many losses in a, in a few games, but um, I think the, the main thing is, is always going back to what I control, and the first thing I always look at is myself. So can I, can I be better? Where can I be better? And when I say that, I'm looking on field but also off the field. Um, there's always a, a great week to prepare. There's always little things to, to do and improve on, whether that's a, a skill-based thing, a fitness thing, a mental thing, like you say. So um, that's the first thing. You know, I've had some great leaders that I've played alongside and, and under, and they've all gone out there and sorted themselves out, self out first. So that's what I've been trying to do these last couple of weeks. Sam, I know, you know you've said you guys have been able to avoid a little bit of the noise. What's it been like to see your families back home? Have they been able to sort of keep clear of it? My wife's got uh, three kids at home by herself, so um, I don't think she's watched the, the news for a few few weeks with me being away. But um, they're really supportive, as, as all family members are. So they're uh, they're there to pick us up when uh, we're not going so well, but then also they're there to keep us grounded when maybe we're getting ahead of ourselves. So um, our families are very supportive, and they know us better than anyone. So they know when we need to pick up or when we need just to, to calm down and make sure you you stay nice and grounded. Um, and that's the same for everyone's family. Everyone has a, a great support network and it's also great being on tour, having all the guys here so we can identify if anyone's um, you know, not being themselves. So yeah, it, it's great having that support network here and also having it at home. A lot of talk about the improved mall defence in that first test. You felt that's gone up another level this week and you feel Jason Ryan's sort of fitting in quite seamlessly now? Yeah, we've got to get better um, from where we were as well like yeah there were some improvements last week but at the same time um, you know there, there were things that we didn't quite nail off so and, and that's the thing about Test Match Rugby you can't get sick of nailing the basics and that's one of the basics that we have to nail as a forward pack so uh, looking forward to the challenge this week around that. Sam, Sam Asoni was pretty quick to pass on the uh, good work at the line out last week to the locks and the line out caller um, what's your take on how things went? I'll throw it all back at him. Uh, he threw really well, and uh, you know it's great. I thought he had a really good game last week, and uh, let's hope for more of the same.